Castle Air Force Base, California, the B-52, America's biggest and newest jet bomber, goes into squadron service with the Strategic Air Command. A wingspan of 185 feet, length of over 150 feet, and intercontinental range. Over 6,000 miles without refueling. Combat ceiling of 50,000 feet and a speed. Imagine your 73-year-old father or grandfather, maybe now a bit sluggish and slowed by age. Now imagine he suddenly met and fell in love with a smoking hot 28-year-old supermodel and decided to get married. Yeah, it's like that. The B-52 Bomber on Viagra. That's next on Maximus. Greetings everybody, Maximus here. Well, on March 1st of this year, Rolls-Royce announced that they've begun testing their F-130 engines for the United States Air Force B-52 fleet at the NASA Stennis Space Center in Mississippi, USA. The F-130 engines were selected to replace the existing Pratt & Whitney TF-33P 65-year-old engines as part of the B-52 modernization program, with a total of over 600 F-130 engine deliveries expected by the end of the modernization process. But before we get to Rolls-Royce's big announcement, let's first take a look back a few years. About 72 years to be exact. The B-52 took its maiden flight in April of 1952. Built to carry nuclear weapons for Cold War era deterrence missions, the B-52 Stratofortress replaced the Convair B-36 Peacemaker. However, as a veteran of several wars, the B-52 has dropped only conventional munitions in combat so far. The B-52's official name is the B-52 Stratofortress, but it's rarely used. Informally, the aircraft has become commonly referred to as the Buff, as in the big ugly fat fa er fella. The B-52 has been in service with the United States Air Force since 1955. As of June 2019, there were 76 aircraft in inventory. 58 are operated by active forces including the 2nd Bomb Wing and 5th Bomb Wing. 18 by reserve forces with the 307th Bomb Wing, and about 12 in long-term storage at the davis Monthan Air Force Base Boneyard in the Arizona desert. The bombers flew under the Strategic Air Command, or SAC, until it was disbanded in 1992, and then it was absorbed into the ACC, or the Air Combat Command. Then in 2010, all B-52 Strato Fortresses were transferred from the Air Combat Command to the new Air Force Global Strike Command. Superior performance at high subsonic speeds and relatively low operating costs have kept the B-52s in service despite the advent of later more advanced strategic bombers, including the Mach 2 Plus Convair B-58 Hustler, the cancelled Mach 3 North American XB-70 Valkyrie, the very bold geometry Rockwell B-1 Lancer, as well as the stealth Northrop Grumman B-2 Spirit. After being upgraded between 2013 and 2015, these last upgraded airplanes were expected to serve well into the 2050s. However, throughout its history, the US military kept trying to kill off the big ugly fat fella, but he refused to die because they never could develop another platform as lethal and efficient as the original. To this day, the B-52 carries its original engines, eight Pratt & Whitney TF-33P engines. These are the same engines as the JT-3D that powered the 707, the world's first commercial jet airliner. The military just classified them with a different moniker. Over the decades, the B-52 has seen many upgrades in armament and technology. In July of 2013, the Air Force began a fleet-wide technological upgrade of the B-52 called Combat Network Communications Electronics Technology, or CONNECT for short, to modernize electronics, communications, technology, computing, and avionics on the flight deck. CONNECT upgrades include software and hardware such as new computer servers, modems, radios, data links, receivers, and digital workstations for the crew. Connect upgrades will cost a US $1.1 billion overall and take several years to complete outfitting the entire fleet. So far, funding for Connect has been secured for 30 B-52s. 
The United States Air Force hopes for 10 Connect upgrades per year, but that rate has yet to be decided. The first B-52 with Connect was delivered to the U.S. Air Force in 2014. Meanwhile, they have and continue to add more and more electronics and weapons capabilities to the B-52 over the decades. But if I went into each one of those, it would take more than one video. So now knowing everything that could be updated on the big fat ugly fella has been updated, well that left only one system left on the B-52 remaining to upgrade. And that of course is the most important upgrade without which the 72 year old jet would never get off the ground. The engines, but not only the engines, but the aerodynamic twin pods that will carry two each of the eight engines and the new pylons that will attach the engines to the wings. While Pratt & Whitney's engines have undoubtedly helped the B-52 achieve its 72 years of service, however in later years they have become far too expensive to maintain. An Air Force rule requires that the service overhaul for each TF-33 is every 6,000 flight hours, which incurs a cost of $2 million per engine. As of 2019, these factors paired with fuel needs had made it so the B-52 cost $70,000 per hour to fly, cementing the Stratofortress as one of the most expensive aircraft for the Air Force to operate. So in 2018, the Air Force kicked off the competition for the B-52 commercial engine replacement program, with Rolls-Royce, Pratt & Whitney, and General Electric Aviation all in the running. After a three-year-long battle and almost exactly three years to the day, in 2021, Rolls-Royce was awarded the $500.8 million contract. So that gets us caught up to today and Rolls-Royce's announcement that they have begun testing the new F-130 engines. F-130 is Rolls-Royce and the military designation of these engines, but these workhorses have been shuttling the rich and famous around the world since 1995. The commercial version of this engine is the Rolls-Royce BR700 series, which has been in use since the mid-90s on Gulfstream, Bombardier business jets, as well as the Boeing 717. So on March 1st of 2023, Rolls-Royce launched the F-130 engine testing program at the company's outdoor test facility at the NASA Stennis Space Center in Mississippi. Rolls-Royce says that 600 new engines and spares are expected to be delivered by the end of the program. The March tests were a milestone for the program as it was the first time the F-130 engines have been tested in the dual-pod engine configuration of the B-52 aircraft. Each B-52 aircraft has eight engines in four pods. Rolls-Royce says that the engine testing will focus on crosswind aerodynamic flow, as well as confirming the successful operation of the engine's digital control systems. Early results from the testing have been very positive, with additional test data to be analyzed over the next several months. Rolls-Royce said that it is collaborating very closely with the U.S. Air Force and Boeing, which is managing the overall engine integration and B-52 aircraft modernization program. The new engines will extend the life of the B-52 aircraft for another 30 years. As a matter of fact, the F-130 engines are so durable, they are expected to remain on wing for the remainder of the aircraft's life. Wow, just think about that. That's over 100 years since the B-52 first flew. Rolls-Royce said that the F-130 derived from the BR family of engines has a proven successful history of over 30 million flight hours of operation and a high reliability rate. It's a proven dependable engine with a fuel-efficient design. The F-130 engines will be manufactured, assembled, and tested at Rolls-Royce facilities in Indianapolis, the company's largest production facility in the U.S. Rolls-Royce has invested over a billion dollars in recent years to completely modernize manufacturing and testing facilities in Indiana, as well as advanced technology. Well, until recently, Boeing was an unstoppable force in the world of aviation for over a century. 
and look no further than the B-52, an aircraft expected to do battle for over a hundred years. That's over three generations of Americans that will have had their freedom protected by this big fat ugly fella as it rules the skies for over a century. And I can't wait to see what the B-52 looks like with these sweet Rolls Royce engines and new pods under wing. I don't know why, but military aircraft videos tend to get a very poor response on my channel for some reason. But I don't care, because I was excited to tell you this story. Well, that's going to wrap it up for now. How about you? What do you think about the B-52's new power plants? Let me know down below. And before you go, I'd love it if you would subscribe, hit that like button, share with your friends, and click on the bell icon so you can always be notified whenever we release new content. And remember, leave the rubber on the runway and your troubles on the ground. And I will see you next time in the air. Yeah, this is Maximus.